Our last three dive sites are in the Dry Tortugas, 80 miles to the west of Key West. We'll dive Fort Jefferson on Garden Key, Loggerhead Reef, and the historic Windjammer Wreck. The first site is the Fort Jefferson National Monument on Garden Key. Construction on this fort began in 1845 and continued for the next 30 years, even though the fort never fired a shot at an enemy vessel. A prison during the Civil War, the most famous inmate here was Dr. Samuel Mudd, who unknowingly set the broken leg of John Wilkes Booth, President Lincoln's assassin. Fort Jefferson became a coaling station for U.S. warships during the Spanish-American War. Let's check out the perimeter of the fort. We've reached the dark side of the fort. Today, Fort Jefferson is protected and maintained by the National Park Service. To the west of the fort is Loggerhead Key, marked by the Dry Tortugas Lighthouse, a 151-foot brick structure built in 1858 with a light visible 28 miles out to sea. Beautiful Loggerhead Reef runs to the southwest of the island. The Dry Tortugas were named in 1513 by Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon, referring to the lack of fresh water and an abundance of sea turtles found here. On July 1, 2001, the Dry Tortugas were designated the largest fully protected marine preserve in the country, with fishing and other harvesting prohibited in 91 square miles around Fort Jefferson and 60 square miles around a region known as Riley's Hump. Our final dive site is the Windjammer Wreck about three quarters of a mile to the southwest from Loggerhead Key in 25 feet of water on beautiful Loggerhead Reef. She spread out over 80 yards and was an iron-hulled sailing vessel. She's easy to spot with a spar of her metal sticking up out of the water. She was built in Scotland in 1875 and named the Killian. She was renamed Antonin in 1893 and again renamed Avanti in 1901. Avanti, like all turn-of-the-century windjammers, competed with steamships and carried mostly bulk cargo. She sank in a storm here on January 21, 1907, carrying a cargo of lumber from Pensacola, Florida to Montevideo, Uruguay. That's a wrap for the Florida Keys Dive Odyssey video series. We visited 165 dive sites covering almost 200 miles of the world's third largest barrier reef system. 
I hope we forever link the skill of GPS navigation with the sport of diving while providing future generations a time capsule of the Florida Keys and its reef line at the dawn of the new millennium. My buddy Richie Moretti of the Turtle Hospital in Marathon has dedicated his life to rehabilitating injured sea turtles and releasing them back to sea. These incredible sea creatures are threatened by humans in a variety of ways. The most common injury results from collisions with boats. Now this particular turtle here, she's only here, she had an infection and she was brought down to us to cure the infection. But what we're gonna do while she's here, we're gonna try and wait her to make her a little more where she can swim a little easier. What happens is when she swims like this, she grows algae here and then the fish pick on her. So we're gonna try and wait her so she doesn't do that anymore. And then we'll hopefully put her at Theater of the Sea or the aquarium in Key West, where at least people can see what happens to the animals when they get hit by a boat and maybe they'll stay a little ways away from them. What happens is the prop absolutely destroys the shell, then it'll heal, but when it heals, there's air inside of it. There's spinal damage. Her, uh, her spinal cord is severed, and that's why that one flipper is completely paralyzed. And it's amazing, sometimes we'll actually get an x-ray of the spinal cord completely cut, and then a couple years later, they'll start moving the flippers, they'll get some growth back together again. Huh. Yes. Another terrible malady, tumors, are a direct result of sewage and other man-made toxins present in our ocean water. These tumors may be removed surgically a few at a time so the turtle won't go into shock. Even this one, uh, it's not actually on the cornea. Most of it's on the third eyelid. Even that one can come off. Human trash is another danger. This unfortunate turtle, covered with tumors, has also swallowed and digested a large clump of fishing line. The monofilament must be gently extracted inches at a time over the course of several weeks. If you pull it, see their intestines go like this, and if you pull the monofilament, you could actually cut through the intestine and kill the animal. Now we can go to 10 squid a day. The only moisture, the only water these animals get are from their food. The minute they go off their food, they get dehydrated. This tiny hawksbill turtle was so tangled up in fishing line that it had to have its right front flipper amputated. Wouldn't you like to help injured sea turtles? Contact the Turtle Hospital for more information. I want to thank my technical advisor, Stefan Sakura. Stefan is a brilliant navigator, a renowned treasure salver, and as a shipwreck historian, he's a true genius. Stefan transforms himself into the minds of ancient mariners to unlock secrets of the past. Yeah, let's go. The fabulous oil paintings featured throughout this video were created by my buddy Bill Trotter. Bill has devoted a lifetime toward the recreation of seafaring history through his artistic endeavors. Bill's masterfully executed works graphically illustrate man's ongoing battle with the elements of sea, wind, wave, and weather. Bill and his lovely wife Frida live at the William Trotter Lighthouse Maritime Studio in Apalachicola, Florida.